Okay, we're going to teach you something this morning that will knock the socks off you. It's cold out there. We want our socks. Knock the <laughs> socks off you. Um, <coughs> we're going we're to talk on answered prayer. Everybody desires prayers to be answered. I mean, you, you'd have to be a complete fool and an idiot if you wouldn't. Uh, even the atheist in the foxhole starts praying, don't they? Pray, prayer, because we, there's, you, you know, there's something in you that yearns for God. Do you, do you know you know why you yearn for God? Because you were created for God and uh, you were created for fellowship with him. So there, there, there's an inner yearning of every person uh, of the human race that's created an image of God to yearn for God. And um, we're going to talk for a few minutes about my text for today. And I'm going to look at four verses. I'm, and this is what I'm texting out. If you're not on my text list out there in uh, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, or here, if, if you have a cell phone and you'd like me to text you, this is, a, this is an example of what I text out. My text out for today, it starts out with this. And we're going to talk with one another here also. Uh, it starts out with a statement that I make in the text out for today. I've texted out a few, but not a lot yet. I'll be texting out more. And if you're not on my list of texting, I, I text to several hundred people. It takes a lot of time. Every day. I don't do it every day because it's getting some, such a big deal that some I missed yesterday completely. I, I didn't text out yesterday just because I just couldn't get it done. Um, but uh, and when, when I text you, I pray in the light of what I know about you. There's some people I know a lot about. I know plenty about Marcel, more than he wishes I knew about him. <laughs> Me and Marcel go back a while. I know a lot about Donnie. I know a lot about Philip. I know a lot about Trace. I know way too much about Ernest. <laughs> Ernest shaking his head no <laughs> I don't know enough you mean what I know is, is more to it than what I know <laughs> but, but here's my statement you have a right to expect your <coughs> prayers to be answered that's a, that's a good start isn't it ah but there's a caveat here there's a condition. If. That little old word, if. You have a right to expect your prayers to be answered if you are a born-again Christian and live a life that honors God. That's why you want Doris to pray for you. That's why I want Doris to pray for, for me. Over the years, I've known some people that are just absolute, wonderful, godly Christians that get their prayers answered. You know who I call when, uh, when I need something from God and get it done? That's people I get a hold of. Amen. Some sorry Christian, if they're a Christian at all, I'm not even sure they are a Christian. I'm not trying to embarrass you, trying to make you feel bad, but your prayers mean nothing. Until you pray that prayer, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And then, remember my opening statement. Uh-oh. Went off, Joe. Our turn. <laughs> Come and save me. That was cute. Come and save me. I'm even going to bring it up. You can watch too much of Jim Carrey or something. I gotta touch it every once in a while, huh? Yeah, I don't play good stuff first. Yeah. Okay, thanks, buddy. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while I gotta touch it, okay. So you have a right 
to expect your prayers to be answered if you are a born-again Christian and you live a life that honors God. A saved person that is right with God. Just like we're going to take the Lord's Supper today. It's the first, it's the first uh, Sunday of the month we take the Lord's Supper. But I always warn you when we take the Lord's Supper, not only uh, uh, the um, uh, one of the uh, things that have to be, if you take the Lord's Supper, you need to be a born-again Christian. Not only a born-again Christian, but someone that's right with God. If you've got sin on your in your life and you go live in that sin and you don't want to, don't take the Lord's Supper, pass. Because we'll read in 1 Corinthians 11, it says some of, uh, some of you get sick and some of you die. So I don't want you getting sick. I don't want God killing you. And he killed people at the Lord's Supper because he'd come in and some of them were drunk. Some of them were carrying on and so on and so forth. So here's the, let's talk about it. All right. Uh, from, 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 from what I said so far, and I haven't even got into the four uh, text yet. Uh, does anyone have any comments or questions or something to say? Ernest always got to say something. Okay, shoot, Ernest. Okay. Let's, let's look at it in my position. That little look word, at it in your position. Yes, sir. That little word, if. If. Is, if is the choices that I make. Just like a Bill Clinton answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, remember what Bill Clinton said? Uh, to my, well, what was the word he talked about? Remember that? What what do you say, Philip? About him being in peace. Huh? He said it, it depends on what your definition of the word is. Yeah. Okay. So Bill Clinton says, "What is the definition of is?" And now Ernest says, "What is the definition of if?" Okay. Go ahead, Ernest. It's the definition of the choices that we make. Huh? It's the definition of the choices. That exactly we make. right. That's a good answer. I know. Yeah. It is. We we can make good choices, which are what godly choices. Right. We can make bad choices, which are ungodly choices. So the choices we make, if we choose Christ, uh, we can be saved, and that's a wonderful thing, and we can have eternal life. And then if we, and then if we choose to obey him and be a, a Christian that is right with God, walking in the Spirit, and not fulfilling the lusts and desires of the flesh, which most Christians follow they follow the world sad to say they're not in good standing with god although they're christians but don't get much in answer to prayer so the first matthew 21 22 if you want to turn to it in your bible you can do that and all things in fact this was my text out this week and i even preached on it i think this week i might have maybe i didn't i don't know and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer Believing ye shall receive. Now, Joe and I and James talked about this. They were helping me yesterday, and we, we sat down and talked about this for a while after we were done working. And and uh, Joe made the comment to me. Uh, Joe, Joe said uh, that many people take that out of context. That's exactly right. Everybody wants that promise, don't they? I mean, you'd be, you'd be crazy if you didn't you belong in a booby hatch if, if, if you didn't want to take this promise. All things, whatsoever ye shall ask, prayer, in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You, you, I mean, but it, but it ain't as open-ended as you think. There's some, there's some clarification there. Psalm chapter 1, which we read yesterday when we were studying this yesterday morning, just the three of us. Uh, but but, but it, it said in Psalm 1, we'll not read it, but you can go to it and read it if you like. You can turn to it. I believe it starts in about 20, chapter 23 or 24. Uh, it says that ye will none of my reproof. You will not listen to my reproof. And then he says, consequently, or because you will... Uh, uh, what is reproof? Uh, any any kind of admonition that the Bible gives you not to do something. <coughs> There's a ton of negatives in the Bible. Some, they, you know, I'm, this is what I'm accused of all the time. They, they, Pastor Varga, 
you're 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 way too negative. You got too many negatives in your vocabulary. And I says, I just I'm just, I just take the Bible and preach what the Bible and, and I'm I'm gonna preach the Bible today for the reading for today. Matthew twenty two, one to twenty two. I'll preach it in church this morning after our Sunday school hour. And uh, there's going to be uh, quite a few negatives in there. In fact, there's going to be uh, some things you're not going to like. Just a few people going to heaven. And the other one is going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You say, oh, yeah, something. All I talk about is what the Bible talks about. That's the reading for today. How are you going to blame me for that if I preach through the Bible? And that's the reading for today. So that's what you're going to get in church. So you're going to say, well, I'm just going to stay for Sunday school. I'm getting out of here. Well, maybe you do. I don't know. But you ain't going to get the chicken dinner if you do. <laughs> you're not the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> then, in, then in John uh, 16, you can mark these down and check them. You can turn them in your Bible. John 16, 24 Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So God wants to answer our prayers that we'll have full joy. You know, it's an amazing thing. The thing you don't understand about Christianity, a, a Christianity has joy that God brings you in the midst of persecution. Yeah, in the midst of imprisonment, in the midst of being burned at the stake, and I'll talk more about that in church today. It be more part of my sermon in church today. Um, that there were people that were at the uh, at the hands of the uh, wicked, vile, godless Roman Catholics that were burned at the stake and they would they would be burned at the stake singing praises unto God joyfully that's pretty tough isn't it at the hands of the wicked catholics we we'll are talking about that because um, Matthew 22 1 to 22 talks about that and at the hands of the wicked jews you say how dare you call the i'm talking about the wicked jews in the bible that killed jesus and by the way, let me tell you something. I, I had a piece. I put it on Facebook. You didn't, you didn't get Facebook. You go, go on my Gabriel Varga Facebook. You can look at it. I posted it. might have been in the middle of the night. It might have been this morning. I don't know. I get up and read the Bible, and if I find something I like, I put it up on Facebook. I don't say a lot on Facebook. Mostly I just put Bible, or I put what Matthew Henry said on there. He's, he's a good commentator. You read what Matthew Henry had to say on, on, on Matthew uh, 22, 1 to 22, you read what Matthew Henry has to say on it. And I got it up on Facebook where you can find a, a Matthew Henry commentary is very available. Almost any Bible app you put up, they'll have Matthew Henry's commentary in there or you can get one, you can get his big commentary book. He, comment, he comments on about every verse in the Bible. He, the whole Bible he comments on. He's a pretty smart man. He's very good on Matthew 22, 1 to, 1 to 22. And, and, and what he mentioned I'll make mention of it, mention it again probably in church today too. But did you know that there is worse punishment and worse uh, torture in hell for those that persecute Christians over those that just reject Christ? If you reject Christ, that'll send you to hell. But if you reject Christ like the Catholics have and like the Jews have historically and in the Bible, there will be a lot more punishment and torment for the Jews that persecuted and killed Christians or the Catholics that have done it historically or the Muslims that are doing it today, today. And the others, there are there are other uh, uh, or the or the communists, the, the atheist communists in Russia and other communist nations, China, North Korea, and they're killing Christians 
this very day in Russia. Plenty of them in China. All kinds of them in North Korea. That, that's kept, you, you don't see much about that on the news at all. You want to see about where Christians are getting killed and what's happening to Christians around the world? Uh, uh, look at the website. I think it's called Christian Martyrs. And it'll give you an up-to-date happening of what's happening today about killing Christians all over the world. But those that are killing Christians and have over the centuries past there will be a much hotter hell for them than just someone that's rejected Christ and went to hell. So there's degrees of, of punishment in hell. Let's go to our, is there anything, does anyone want to say about that? In or China. Huh? China, I heard on the news a while back. I didn't believe it until I heard it. They said it's mandatory to be burnt when you're dead over in China. Huh? They don't bury their people, they burn them. Yeah. That's China. A uh, heathens. Man mandatory. Does not, uh, uh, he, uh, heathens usually burn their dead. Heaven, the Bible, uh, Christians bury their dead. But you know, even Christians, I, I guess they're, I know some people that are uh, born again and grandpa dies and they burn them instead of burying them. You know why? Cheapscape chiselers. <laughs> they want to pay, they want to pay 600 instead of 6,000 to put them away. I, I'm just telling you the truth. How do you, how do you They're feel, lousy, cheapskate chiselers. How do you feel about somebody donating their body to uh, the, uh, science. The, the, huh? farm, the body farm or for science? You can't donate your body. What are you going to do with your body? You can't. Yes, you, you can, can donate. Huh? You, you can donate, donate organs. You can donate, no, you can donate yeah, you your whole body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they ain't going to get much out of this 80 year old, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Got a worn out heart, a worn out liver, worn out kidneys, a worn out brain, fat. Yeah, what, they, what are you going to do? You salvage know, my they fat? They take your body and they place it in different uh, uh, ways, like. My sister's either in, got a in heat in heat or in a car huh? or whatever. Yeah, and they study how it reacts. Yeah, exactly. They're going to put, put, put my body and put it in the car and crash the car? Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. They do all kinds of stuff with No it's way, Jose. They can use your heart. <laughs> I, told my, I told my wife, if I die before she does, I told my kids, you better stick me in a coffin and put me in the ground. <laughs> I'm leaving enough money to do that. <laughs> Even if I go broke and I don't have it, you better put me in the ground anyway. Don't you burn me like no heathen or give me a way to put me in a put my old dead body in a car and have him crash it and see how it comes. Oh, come on. That now that's how ridiculous and stupid I this stupid world is. You know that? Can you imagine that? Anyway. Put a dead body in a car and crash it. It's just a body. Listen, uh, they can... They can get the live bodies that have just been killed with that. Oh, I guess they, they could that, I guess. But they already had the crash. <laughs> Got drunk and run into a tree, huh? How many, how many of you in here? We might have someone here. How many of you in here? You probably wouldn't tell it if you did. How many in here you got drunk and ran into a tree, but you survived? How many we got in here? Just ten of you. No. <laughs> None of you admit it. Is your hand up, Joe? <laughs> Are you scratching your head? Are you scratching your head? <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. Here's your problem. James 4, 3. Mark that down or look it up. Ye ask and receive not. So you're praying. What, what is prayer? Asking. You ask God for something. You ask and you receive not. Because ye ask amiss. Oh, so you mean, so that doesn't mean like you thought that, that Matthew 21, 22 says, All things whatsoever ye ask in prayer believing, ye shall receive. If you ask something and you really believe you want it, you might be asking amiss, then you're going to get it. That's what James says. Because you're asking for what? Selfish things. Selfish things. I said, "Ye shall ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lusts." You see, many prayers, and probably the vast majority of prayers, is because of lust. You're covetous of something. You want a certain car or a certain house 
or a certain person to marry or a certain piece of clothing or a certain piece of jewelry or a certain city that you want to live in. But all of that, some of them was, he's not here today, but some of them was telling me of, of, a, of a, I had it all planned out what's going to happen in the next two years, and he's praying God that it happens. I said, well, that probably won't happen. Why not? I says, because it's all selfish. Oh, he got mad at me. <laughs> As you just think about what you just went over and what you just went through and told him, you might have been mad enough not come today. I don't know. Told him that Thursday. He gets a check, he won't be here. Huh? He gets a check, he won't be here. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, this guy works. He works. Yeah, he, he works. But you know what his problem is? He's a worker, but he's a drunkard. And so he might be able to accomplish that two-year plan of his if he does what? Quit drinking! <laughs> Got the I got I got nice folks come around here, men and women, but they're drunkards. They do good for a week or two or maybe a month and then they're right back in it. Like pigs in the mud. They go back to it. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands, got a few of you in here right now. Yeah. And it's wrecked your life, you can't keep a job. When you work, you're wonderful. When you work, you're wonderful. But when you're drunk, you're pitiful. Huh? Yeah, I'm just telling you. Uh, and that's been this guy's trouble all these years, and he's good. He can work. But you work, you... Uh, why do people... Why do people always live out on the street and they work and make money? They drink their money up or dope it up or whatever. There's a reason behind all that. Am I telling the truth or not? Yes, you are. Come on. Let's get honest. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your own lust. And then this is a good one. The fourth one. 1 John 3.22. I read this every day of my life because I read 1 John every day of my life. And whatsoever we ask. Okay. That's a good one. Whatsoever I ask. Woo, I like that. Whatsoever I ask. We receive of him, of God. Woo-hoo. We can clap to that one, can't we? <laughs> because, uh-oh, wait a minute. Here comes that if, Ernest. <laughs> because is kind of like if, isn't it? It's called Conditional. Conditional. If or because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Sharon, uh, Doris's daughter, she said this morning, I told her, I don't know if she's watching at home or not. She dropped Doris off. She went home. But if she's watching, um, she said, uh, uh, I says, uh, I, I quoted to her the uh, Matthew 21, 22, and I says, and, and like Joe, Joe said yesterday morning, you were right, Joe, when you said this, you said that that's a, 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 people take that verse out of context. They love to take it out of context because it's conditional to the will of God. You see, God answers prayers that fall within his will. We'll be talking about, in and, 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 and the text today, Matthew 22, 1 to 22, is strictly about getting people out of hell. It's about the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's about salvation. That's all that matters. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here if you're a Christian. Someone cared enough about you to tell you how to be saved. Now you ought to care enough about others to tell them how to be saved. Well, what else is important in Christianity? Well, there's things that add to that and work towards that, but that's the ball game. Salvation. We got all kinds of foolishness in Christianity, all kinds of stupid music and all kinds of stupid fellowship. 
You ain't going to get much crowd tonight unless you have a Super Bowl party with wings. Well, we're going to have church tonight, folks. Well, there ain't going to be no Super Bowl party. It ain't going to be no wings. We just had the Bible on it, so you see him. Well, I ain't coming to your church. That's okay. Go on. Go on with the heathens. You see, the, the Christian, the Christians today, they're so wrapped up in worldly music and worldly pleasures. And, 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 and I heard a preacher even that I should know better in making a big deal about it. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, we're going to have a Super Bowl party. Oh, shut up. Why don't you pray? You ought to come here at 6 o'clock this evening and get on your face before God. You need things straightened out in your own life and you've got loved ones like I do. I've got loved ones that need prayer and I'm going to be here praying. I ain't going to be having a Super Bowl stupid party. Yes, Trace. The worshiping idols, yeah. And they're digging up from what I saw. I don't know what it looked like. I just got the, I got the names of, of, of who's supposed to. I just seen it on an ad or something on television. They're bringing some old whores out of the past to sing at halftime. <laughs> and they're bringing someone back. This is the first time she sang since... 2010 when she went in the addiction clinic and this is her first singing again. I don't know who she is. I don't know her name or nothing. But she's going she's gonna to start at, you don't have to wait till 6. They're going to they, uh, they have these weirdos and jerks and queers and everything else. They're going to have them from 2 o'clock on. <laughs> Used to be a half hour before, then an hour before. I don't think the game starts till like 6.30. 6.30. They have them weirdos starting out at 2. Go ahead, Christian. If you are a Christian at all, I don't know. We got Super Bowl parties at churches all over. All over this city. Calvary does what? Supposed to be a, a, a Christian woman. She claims to be a Christian. She makes sense. And she, she, news anchor from Fox. I saw her on the Fox. Yes, I, told, I told my wife, I said, I don't want to watch that. They had news, but they're they're it's it it's the biggest news program for hours in the morning. Uh, I I don't know what the name of the program is, but a, a girl on there calls herself a she's lost her husband, uh, divorce, and uh, what was that? That was your phone. <laughs> Some big event here. I don't know. It says. Joe, don't forget, Super Bowl activities start at 2 o'clock. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that, Joe. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hi, honey. All right. I wasn't talking about you, sweetheart. Not this time. I haven't said, it, haven't says, said a word about you. He says bake a lot of chicken wings for the Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> Cheat for that, I don't know. But anyway, uh, they 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 uh, they they had the the three hosts. They had her drive up first and park. This yes, this Friday morning I think. Yeah, Friday morning because she don't work. The the head anchors the three. She drives up there in Miami in a Bentley. Yeah. And then the next guy, he drives up in a, a Lamborghini. Oh, why not? Yeah. Uh, and the next one uh, drives up in a, uh, like a sports, uh, like a uh, like a four wheeler uh, Wrangler or something, which was you know I don't know. It was probably a Land Rover, probably a hundred thousand dollar car. I don't know what probably it was. Mercedes. Huh? It's probably a Mercedes. Yeah, it might have been. It it, it could have been because they, they have Mercedes that are like uh, four-wheel stuff and that too. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Right. But it's a joke and it's a laugh. And they, they have some kind of so-called Christianity. It's not Christianity at all. 
and, and, and watch out. Come on right in, folks. I lost it again, Joe, but that's okay. We had enough of that. So anyway, anybody want to say much about that? Barbara coming in for church. Answered prayer. There's conditions upon it. You must be saved. You must be someone walking in fellowship with God or your prayers won't be answered. Like in, like in Proverbs 1, it says, I've tried to reprove you and you wouldn't be reproved and you're going to ask and I'm going to laugh. Someone says God's going to laugh at you. You won't take his open rebuke from the scriptures about how you live and what you do and you say, shake your fist at God and say no. And then you pray and God laughs. Yeah. His will, like Sharon said this morning, his will. You get your prayers answered if you pray in God's will. And his will always has to do with getting people saved and living for God. And I close on this statement from Second Peter, I'm sorry, Second John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Here's a way to not get your answers answered, prayers answered. It says, love not the world, the Super Bowl. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. <clears throat> if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but are of the world. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. We're closing Sunday school. You want to Go to a church that's having a Super Bowl party? Go on, it ain't going to be here. Go ahead, you worldly Christian, if you're a Christian at all. And if that's a Christian church at all. But you can come here and hear the Word of God and pray. Do something that honors God. Maybe you got something in your life you need to straighten out. Maybe you got a loved one that needs to be prayed for. Instead of the foolishness of the world and all the entertainment of the world, the... the, the, the um, Biggest sport event of the year. And oh, everybody's going nuts. It's all in the veil and it leads to hell. Go ahead. Go to the church with the Super Bowl party. I'm going to be here. We're going to be looking at the word of God and praying. Try to get right with God and try to get some answers to prayer for our loved ones. And try to get some people saved. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be here at 6 o'clock. Hope you are too. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you. There's a way to get answered prayers to do the will of God. That's it, the will of God. Let's get close to him and honor him, honor his commandments. Be saved, be born again, the Bible way. Not much really known or taught about that today. Bless now. Bring others to church. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Fifteen minutes. You can get a cup of coffee. We'll start church in 15 minutes.